let's talk a little bit about Gearbox and why we're here. So Gearbox, what's our motto? We like to build the things that matter, right? So as an engineer, you can use your skill pretty much like a superhero. You can build you know, things to make money. You can build things that add value. But hopefully, you can do something that's in the middle, something that adds value, but also makes a career out of yourself. So at Gearbox, we focus on building things that matter. Right, so we look at problems that uh, need a solution and we focus on solving that. So Gearbox Europlacer is a company that has been formed out of the Gearbox ecosystem. Right? So Gearbox from its inception uh, focused on developing electronics capacity or the capacity to develop electronic hardware. Gearbox Europlacer is the next step in that. So we're going from beyond just prototypes into mass manufacturing of electronics. So Gearbox is really a joint venture between three companies. Two of them being, of course, Gearbox. The second one being Europlacer, um, of whom uh, David is representing today. Right? And what's our goal? Is that we want to offer manufacturing services around electronics all the way from an innovator and an innovator means a student, somebody who has an idea, all the way to uh, mature companies. Right? And why is that important? When we look at our economy, our economy is just at the start of developing electronic hardware. So I see you guys here not as students, but I see you as startup owners, CEOs, five years, 10 years from now. Right? And that's why I asked, have you built a PCB? Because when you build a PCB now, Five years from now, you'll be building 10,000 PCBs, right? Creating a startup that solves a problem. On the first slide, you may have noticed I said, growth positive sector. This is really important. When we think of the Kenyan economy, everybody says our economy is not growing as fast as it should. We don't have enough jobs. Um, many of you may be graduates and are struggling to find a job. This sector is exploding, especially when we think about Africa, right? And why is that important? If you solve a problem in Kenya, let's say around water, um, how do you measure water and distribution of water to minimize wastage? Your solution can be replicated and scaled across the continent, right? So this is a, a huge growth positive sector. So I want you to think not only just about Kenya and Nairobi, think about East Africa and across the continent. So our partners are Gearbox, um, and within Gearbox is a company called Machine Africa SMT, Parable Trust, which is the company that owns Europlacer, and then uh, an investment fund out of London called Wellers Impact. So what's our vision here? Really quickly, it's just to, we want to stimulate the creation of African design solutions to solve the problems that we have. Why is that important? African design solutions. That means that we are designing our own solutions for the problems that we have, not somebody else from overseas coming to solve those problems, meaning we have to do it ourselves, right? How will we do that? We have to collaborate first, right? When you're collaborating about a problem, it's not just the engineer. You have to know the people who are facing that problem and get the information from them then you can innovate around that problem to find a best fit solution. And then once you've tested your best fit solution, you can scale that solution or propagate that solution across many markets. So we want to collaborate, innovate, and propagate. Did you know Kenya is the regional leader in IoT hardware development, East, Central, even West Africa? Did you know that? Nope. Nobody tells that story, right? The government hasn't put any money towards IoT development. And why is that? It's because of startups, like yourselves, solving a problem that people face, right? So we've analyzed the data in the market and we look at why is Kenya the leader? Number one, we use technology every day, right? So technology is a part of our lives, so it's not a big leap forward. IoT networks in Kenya are growing very rapidly. So now you have access to NB IoT, you have access to LoRa, 
you have access to Sigfox, right? Those of you who have tried to design IoT solutions and put that IoT device on a GSM network, what happens? It dies, the battery dies very quickly. So these new IoT networks help you manage your, your product uh, very, or the power in your product very easily. Another reason why Kenya is a, a leader is because we have this huge pool of young engineers like yourselves, like people who want to use their skills to solve a problem. And then last but not least, M-Pesa. If you're going to build a product that people are going to use, and it's electronic, they can't use that and pay in cash, right? It has to be mobile money. And because we use mobile money more than any other country on the continent, dare I say, in the world, <laughs> this is a big, big catalyst for IoT devices. Okay? You had a question? I noticed from your slides you considered transport a less lucrative um, venture when it comes to IoT, but I had a question. Uh, if you look at what we import most, it's vehicles, and we've been able to do the mechanical bit of assembly. So what would your advice be for someone who is very much into the electronics bit and encouraging it in Kenya? and? Um, the 3D printing of houses, real estate. I feel like transport and real estate are the major parts. So for someone like me who has limited funding and opportunities, what would you, your advice be? So on the transport, I think you were talking about this particular slide, right? So what this slide shows is out of all the IoT development that is happening locally, where does it fall? Most of it is in pay-as-you-go. Um, about 26% is in utilities, 4% in transport, and then a little bit others. So this doesn't mean that transport is less lucrative. Right? All that it means is that the barrier to develop a product very quickly, and this leads to your question about funding, you're more likely to get a success in pay-as-you-go. Right? That's just where a lot of the development is. But it doesn't mean that if you look at motor vehicles that are coming in and you see that there's a gap that IoT can solve and you can solve that problem, then by all means go for it because that's a huge base right, that you can solve. What I, when I was talking about electronics in a vehicle, I was talking about the, the engine control, the ECU, which requires many, 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 many years of development. So you want something that can give you the fastest or the shortest path to success with the greatest uh, impact. So again, this is where when you're thinking about where do I solve, when you're doing your problem statement, try to look there, try to see what's the biggest market, where don't I have a lot of players, and then attack it there. The question about funding. Now all of you asked this. I need funding, I need funding. We all need funding, we need funding at Gearbox, your place, right? <laughs> Trust me, it's the dilemma of all startups. But funding is, again, and I'll again speak this from personal experience. Nobody is going to fund an idea. It doesn't matter how brilliant that idea is. But as soon as you have a proof of concept and can show somebody this is what I've built, this is the data from that solution, this is the problem that it's solving, somebody will listen to you. Maybe it's just something to add value for, especially for someone like her who is looking for funding. Okay, like you said, they need proof of concept, right? There is a program Elon Musk started. How many know Elon Musk? So he started a program whereby if you have proof of concept and it's basically in the same thing like you're saying, as long as you're sol solving a problem, like maybe miniaturizing how we can reduce global warming, stuff like that, automotive engineering, anything. Like, as long as you can have a good proof of concept. He has offered a platform where you go and present your ideas, where it will be shortlisted, and then he'll reach out and maybe give you funding at a cost of your company. So that's how he's building up on other people's success. So that's just one idea. But you can go the other way, your own way. 
Yeah, thank you for that, Emmanuel. There are multiple ways to get funding. Just don't think that funders are going to give you cash without something. So early stage, somebody says, oh, your idea is good. I'll help you fund. You give me 50%, 60%, 70% of your company. Maybe that's not a great idea, right? Especially if your idea is valuable. So take the time to figure out how can you fund this journey. Right? Just open your mind up to various ways that you can fund your, your own dream. You know, as an entrepreneur, when you're taking a product into the market, we always have to see the value it's giving us, especially in terms of returns. So how much is my output versus how much is my input? If it's making sense, then that's fine. Um, and, and that is where I'm still stuck with the uh, gearbox, especially with the uh, PCB production. Um, I think one of the questions I asked last time was, um, I have to be the one sourcing for the, or rather I love, of course I have to design, and then I have to bring in the printed circuit boards, and then I have to bring in the components. So what you guys are basically doing is assembly and testing, right? But um, my question is, what is the cost implication? Because you, you see, um, right now, as I speak to you right now, I'm about to import over 50 boards. But then looking at the cost implications, or rather, if I import them from China, have you, I, I don't know if you have actually packaged it in such a way that it's, it's more cost effective. The time part, perfect, that's good. Okay, thank you for that question. That's a, a very good question. So from a pricing perspective, uh, we have actually, and we've worked on this quite a bit. Um, the line that you see downstairs, this has been here for, I think coming over 18 months. Right? And the reason why it's taken so long is one, to ensure that the processes and the output of that line is meets the international standards of electronics. That's the first thing, because that's your expectation. If you import electronics from China or from India or from Europe, you expect them to be of a certain standard. That is the standard that we aspire to and have implemented. Right? And David will talk a little bit more about that. On the pricing standpoint, we can actually match your price of imported products at the landed cost. That means you take, you import 50 PCBs from all PCB in China, right? So that you'll have your unit cost, you'll have your shipping cost, right? So that total cost, we can meet that. And how are we going to meet that? One, by having local manufacturing. So we know Kenya, our, our labor is, is not as expensive as elsewhere, so we can save some money there. But on components, we're actually, that's our next phase, is to actually import electronic components so you don't have to source for them yourselves, right? And again, this is a, something that we're, we'll be working together, so we'll share that data with you. If there's something missing on that list, you can say, hey, I need this type, I need a 10K uh, capacitor with 5% tolerance. It's very important to what I do. Then we can see how do we add that to that inventory. So then that, that will solve that problem. But on price, yes, we can definitely match uh, imported prices.